In this video, I will be showing you how to quickly set up scaffolding and create a basic flow. First of all, you'll need to import the scaffolding package into your Unity project. Once this is complete, you can then click on the scaffolding menu item at the top and then click on Open View Library. The view library is an important part of scaffolding as it lets you quickly navigate through any views that you've created as well as create new ones. So for this demo, I'm going to dock it next to my project tab. In this demo, we'll be creating two views and an overlay. So first of all, let's create our new view. Click on Create New in the View Library. This will bring up the Create New View window. And as this is the first time we've used this in this project, it'll also tell us it's created a new view manager for us. The view manager is part of scaffolding and it manages all the views at runtime. So let's create a new view. Click in the text field and then type the name you want to give your new view. For this demo, I'll be calling it Main Menu. After that, click on the Create button. One view by itself just isn't enough. We need another view to link to. So go ahead and click on Create New in View Library. And this time, we'll call our view Test View. Once this is finished building, we can go ahead and edit our views. Click on Open next to Main Menu. This will add main menu to our scene so that we can edit it. Now to link two views together, we will need a button. So click on create and then scaffolding and then button. Scaffolding has a pre-made button prefab ready for such cases. First of all, let's rename the newly created button to start game. Next, take a look at its inspector. You'll see that it already has two scripts attached one for defining its actions and another for defining its position in the scene. So let's tell this button to open test view when it's clicked. Under the drop down menu for when I click this button I want it to, change it from do nothing to open. You will then see a list of views your button can open and if you want to open this as a screen or an overlay. A screen can only be opened one at a time, whereas an overlay can be opened as many as you want on top of each other. A screen is perfect for a menu, so we'll stick with that for now. So let's set the position that our button appears in. Instead of the middle of the screen, I want it at the bottom and 60 pixels away from the edge. Now that I'm happy with the behaviour and positioning of the button, I can hit Save and Close. This applies any changes I've made to the prefab and deletes it from the scene. I can now open Test View and add in a button that I can link back to the main menu. This time I'll put it in the top left corner. Now I can click on Save and Close to save any changes I've made. I can now test the scene to make sure my buttons are linking correctly. Brilliant, everything works exactly how we set it to. So now I can create an overlay. Click on Create New again, and this time I'll call it Test Overlay. Now I'll open the overlay and add in a prefab that I made earlier, which contains a basic overlay. On this button, instead of opening anything, I want it to close itself, so I'm going to change the actions to do that. With that done, I'll hit save and close again and open up test view so that I can add in a button to open the overlay. Overlays have an extra parameter when opening them from a button. You can select whether or not all the inputs on the current screen are disabled while the overlay is open. This means that with the current overlay open, you'll not be able to click through to any buttons underneath. Let's select that now. With all our changes done, we can hit save and close and then we can test our flow for the final time. 
As you can see, all the buttons underneath this overlay are inactive while this overlay is open, and the rest of the flow continues to work as we left it. Thank you for watching this quick guide to scaffolding.